Michael, it's great to have you here today. Thanks, Matt. It's great to be here. Awesome. Tell us about yourself, Michael. Yeah, so my name is Michael Wilkerson. Uh, I've lived in the Bay Area all my life, and I'm a, uh, my last previous position was as a senior sales specialist over at VMware. Um, I started from the very bottom uh, all the way back when I worked at Qualys as a sales development rep, worked on my way up to Velo Cloud when I was recruited there. From there, I uh, was acquired through, uh, I was still with Vital Cloud that got acquired by VMware. And so I've been with the same company uh, for about 10 years. And uh, one of the thing I was, you know, with my experience and success as a sales representative, the last couple of years, the team actually was looking to recruit me over to the business operations side as well to have to be the voice of the America sales team when anything was happening, any issues or uh, things that were affecting the quote to cash perspective of streamlining deals being closed. So I would work with multiple different teams, whether it was legal, sales, marketing, uh, the operations team, manufacturing, anything like that. So I did, I was able to get experience on both sides of it from both sales and business operations. Wow, that is an exciting position to be in because you'll have a lot of influence in that kind of a role when you're close to the customer, you're having the code to cash area, and then you have the visibility into the sales pipeline exactly. for the company, right? Exactly. So Michael, tell us about some of the attributes that you would say a good sales leader would have. Yeah, great question. Working with a vast amount of different sales leaders, uh, there's many different uh, things that I think it really takes to be a good sales leader. One of them is being knowing the market, studying the data analytics, of what exactly is out there and what can actually make the company successful for the sales team. Uh, whether that's just looking through, uh, like I said, data uh, metrics, anything like that. The other thing I, and on a more personal level is they need to be very engaged with their sales team. It doesn't matter if you're just a sales manager, a director, or even a VP. At any level of sales leader needs to be very engaged with their team. They need to know how to motivate the team that's going to make their team a lot stronger. And if you because if you if your sales team doesn't have faith in their sales leader, it's not going to be a successful business. Mm -hmm. um, completely agree. Um, absolutely, Michael. Tell us about what um, does it take for you to be closing high ticket deals? Like, what does that process even look like at a large corporation like a VMware? Yeah, so closing big deals over at VMware, for example, you know, we're talking about deals that are working with a $5 billion company, which is now acquired by Broadcom and VMware. So big market deals like that, the biggest thing is, is that you need to, you need to value what the customer is looking for, not just the price point of what, of what you're trying to get out of them. You need to be very engaged with them. They, you need to have, you need to understand what the customer is looking for specifically. And that can range from just talking to the, uh, the product uh, decision maker, it could be coming from a decision maker in the VP level, the executive level, it doesn't matter. You have to basically adapt to and tailor your sales pitch and your personality to the person that you are working with at that point. So outside of that, another big thing is you need to definitely have patience working with any customer or, club or, channel or partner in this case of making sure to help close those bigger deals. If you do actually gain that trust and, and they learn to trust you, they're gonna work with you on a much like further basis of also keeping retention uh, within the company and your product. That's great. So be patient, be adaptive, build trust. Yes. That's what you're trying to say for attributes of great sales leaders and how do you go about closing high ticket deals right. at a company like VMware. Yes. And this was all over the press. It, it recently got acquired and merged into Broadcom. Yep. And now is one of the most strategic assets that Broadcom has going into the AI era right it now. Yep. So Michael, tell us how does, and, and you did touch on this, right? You talked about customers and knowing them. It's not just changing your pitch, but deeply understanding your problem mm -hmm. for them. So tell us how does customer experience tie into customer retention? Yeah. Like I said, uh, learning about the customer, what they want is a big thing. You can't just be a robot with them. You need to be on a more personal level with them. For example, the way I like to handle it is 
I treat them just like they're any other person, not just as a customer, but a human being as well. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that I like to do, and I'm just speaking from my experience, is I like to actually be very transparent with customers. If they have your trust and they're going to be loyal to you, they're going to continue to work with you, which also leads to upsells and add-ons into your product line being purchased with them. Uh, that's really where it comes down to is just uh, being able to keep that relationship very strong uh, and always making sure to keep on following up with your customer base as well. You never want to just leave them hanging in the wind for, you know, months on end. You always want to, even if they're still in the, in the middle of their subscription or product uh, before expiration, you right. always want to keep in touch with them, making sure how they're doing. You know, I've always kept it where, again, I like to break the walls down with them and actually have a more personal relationship with them. I've gone golfing with customers in the past. I've, you know, just got taken them out to dinner when, when I visited them. I've done all those things. Anything that you can do to make them feel more comfortable with you, that's the best way I can see just keeping customer retention. That's that's very powerful because no matter what you do, whether it is golfing or dining, but in all those conversations, in all those meetings, what you're doing is you're deeply understanding and caring for them all along throughout their customer journey, Correct. not the day when the retention is due. You genuinely show your care and appreciation for who they are and the value they bring exactly. for your business, right? And to add on to that, you don't want to just start businesses with them. Ask them about how they are on their personal the relationship. Life. Just yeah. a relationship, especially if you do finally have that trustworthy, honest relationship with them. That'll go beyond just beyond success. Great, great. So, Michael, tell me about these AI companies. Right now, what is happening is there are a bunch of dot AI companies which come out, and sometimes you have a hard time understanding what is it that they do. And if you go look under the hood, they have a broken sales cycle. Mm -hmm. What would be your advice to their chief executive, chief revenue officers, and even to their investors for them to make their sales cycle efficient? Yeah, so... Just, you know, especially with AI being a huge, huge commodity and product like now, it's if you want to say it's the buzzword uh, out there in the market now is AI. So doing research on it, it there are very big uh, positives to having AI inside the sales cycle or what I like to call a quote to cash perspective. So the way I see it benefiting the most is it actually helps the sales, per the sales representative focus more on the customer and their sales cycle. For what I mean by that is AI can take care of like data analytics, metrics in the market. They can tell you, you know, inbound leads, out, outbound leads, which ones are actually good ones to pursue, what are not, what are not ones to pursue in that case. Uh, it also takes away from uh, sales representatives spending so much time on making sure that quotes are done or looking at contract negotiations as well. All that can actually help. All of that within AI can help with the sales process and just let the, let the sales rep do what they're best at. Just focus on working with the customer, closing business as quickly as possible. Just a more streamlined factor into a quote to cash perspective. Love it. The streamlining part is critical no matter what stage your company is. Because if you're going to have a very steady deal pipeline, then streamlining the processes can help them go from just pitching to actually closing Correct. the deal. Correct. So that means uh, you come with a lot of superpowers. Tell me about some of them. Um, I kind of uh, pinpointed on it. For me, I've always been a uh, you know someone that likes to get again break the walls down of the customer. I've dealt with customers that are very you know tedious. They're not very communicative. I've dealt with customers that are very personable. You get to learn. I, I've learned how to work with different styles of customers. And again, I come back to the word, you learn to adapt to your environment. And so for me, I've learned to, one, be very transparent with the customer. If you're very transparent and direct with them, sometimes it's not going to be the answer that they like, but it is. But they do feel better knowing that if you're being very honest with them, they're going to have a much more uh, positive attitude of working with you. Uh, maybe it may not be at that point in time, but maybe down the line when they're ready to move forward. Again, it also comes down to being patient as well. So for me, adaptability, transparency, and uh, patience 
are really those superpowers, you know, and again, you know, treating them as a human being on or off the golf course in this case, because, you know, I love my golf. <laughs> totally. So, so. Totally. That's awesome. Yeah. Michael, tell us about what have been your breakthroughs with the Academy of High Achievers program. Yeah. So working with you, Mahesh, and, uh, and the group, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely been a huge impact on on my life at this point. Uh, for what I mean by that is I've worked with the same company for 10 years. So for me, it was learning how to break down my own walls also, relearning how to network, uh, talking with connections, uh, building new connections, and uh, just being more comfortable in my skin because, you know, again, being very loyal to a company I was with for a decade, you start to you, you learn, you, you, you get away from what you've learned and you have to relearn it all over again. And that's what I've gotten out of this, out of this program and you and just like motivated to actually just go on into my next opportunity. That's, that's great, Michael. And sometimes that's what we need to do. Most importantly, unlearn what doesn't serve us well and learn new patterns, new behaviors and have that new approach, like you said, to get to all new goals. Yep, exactly. So glad to have you here, Michael. Thank you. Thanks, Ash.